Clusters of galaxies are like the huge, gigantic cities of the universe. These are the busiest places, the most densely packed places, the places with the most activity and characters and, and creatures and just, just stuff. If you've ever been in a big city, that's and, and then expand that to be like way bigger, that's a galaxy cluster. And, and just like any city you know every city has like a tagline or a slogan the slogan for galaxy clusters is are you ready the largest gravitationally bound structures in the universe now what does that mean it, the key phrase is because you can't say a, a galaxy cluster is the largest thing in the universe because there are things bigger than galaxy clusters but you can call them the biggest gravitationally bound structures in the universe. And the what this means is that, well, they're, they're bound by gravity. It's kind of self-descriptive, but what it means is that they're, all the stuff inside of a galaxy cluster is glued together by their own gravity. They're not going anywhere. It's not dissolving. It's not shifting around. It's just there. It's just present. A galaxy cluster is present and stable and will persist. It will persist throughout the entire future history of the universe. Most clusters are a few up to maybe 10 billion years old, and they will last a lot, 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 lot longer. Because they are gravitationally bound. Unlike bigger things, like the superclusters in our universe, the superclusters exist, but they are not yet gravitationally bound. They are still forming, and eventually dark energy and the expansion of the universe will rip them apart. So they're only temporary things. But the clusters are permanent. So they really are cities. And to give you a sense of how big these things are... They're around uh, 8 to 80 million light years across, which which sounds uh, big, you know, eight, 10 million light years are, 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 is, is pretty large. But when compared to the size of the universe, it's actually pretty small. So he, here we are. I mean, think about this little paradox. The largest gravitationally bound structures in the universe are tiny little dots compared to the whole entire universe. 13.8 billion years and working with gravity, that's the best gravity could give us. I mean, it is the weakest force, I guess. So they're pretty big. Almost all of them are spherical. About 80% of them are spherical, which means they've been hanging around undisturbed for a very, very long time, at least a few billion years. About 20% have all sorts of crazy tangled structures uh, because of recent mergers. Yes, galaxy clusters can merge into each other. More about that in the next episode. Uh, and they have all sorts of crazy, I mean, just blobs here and there. Uh, it, it's fun stuff. Uh, but 80% of them have been hanging around for a long time. And in terms of mass, a typical galaxy cluster, I mean, this is like defining a city. Like, how many people do you need to make a city? How much mass do you need to make a galaxy cluster? There's some fuzziness in the definition. It's around 10 to the 14 to 10 to the 15 solar masses, which means a typical galaxy cluster has a mass a million billion times that of the sun which is large. I mean, that's just large. It's the largest gravitationally bound structure in the universe. That's a big number. That's a big number. Typical galaxy cluster has a home to around anywhere from like 100 to thousands, maybe a couple thousand galaxies. But these galaxies, remember, each galaxy is home to hundreds of billions of stars. All the galaxies combined in a galaxy cluster, less than 1% of the mass. Less than 1%. That 10 to the 15 solar masses, less than 1% is actually inside galaxies. Galaxies are, are puny. So what is a galaxy cluster really made of? Well, about 10% of a galaxy cluster is made of a hot thing gas called the intra-cluster medium. And let me break that down for you. Intra means inside. Cluster means cluster. And medium means stuff. So intra-cluster medium means inside cluster stuff. It's a very, very hot gas. I'm mean, 10 to 100 million Kelvin. Uh, that is pretty hot. Hot enough that 
this gas, the hot gas, and it's made of hydrogen and helium, you know, like everything else in the universe. The hot gas is so hot that it it bangs against itself and emits radiation called bremsstrahlung, uh, this very cool radiation, X-ray radiation. Like, this gas is so hot, it literally glows in X-rays. That's how intense the intercluster medium is. But it is not dense at all. Yes, it's 10% of the mass of the cluster, but these clusters are like tens of millions of light years across, so there's a lot of space here. And to quantify the amount of space or like how dense these gases are is a jargon phrase we use called the mean free path. The mean free path is how far you have to go on average before you bump into something else. So if you're out, you know, in the middle of like a Midwestern town or some cornfield, you can probably walk a pretty far distance before you bump into someone. But if you're, say, in the streets of Manhattan, you're probably not going to get very far you, before you bump into someone. Your mean free path, the average distance you go where you can still be free and not bump into anyone, is shorter, much shorter in Manhattan than it is in, say, the cornfields of Iowa. It's just those are the mean free paths. And the mean free paths inside of a cluster more like the cornfields of Iowa than the streets of Manhattan. The mean free path for this hot gas for the intercluster medium inside of a cluster is around a light year. So think about, think about it. You're, you're one particle, you're, you're, you're a proton, and you're whizzing around and you're going super fast because you're really hot. On average, on average, it takes you a light year before you bump into somebody else. That's how thin this gas is. And that is just crazy, but that's still only 10%. That's only 10% of the mass of the cluster. 90% of the mass of a cluster is in the form of dark matter. That is what's doing the bounding in the largest gravitationally bound structures in the universe. When you look at a cluster of galaxies and you see a bunch of galaxies and you see the X-rays from the gas, it's all glued together by dark matter. More about that in the next episode about how we use clusters to understand dark matter. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. And you better go to patreon.com slash to help keep these shows going. That wasn't a threat. That was just a very, a very emphatic plea. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.